Well, amen. God bless you. We welcome you to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you know he's a big God. We serve a big God. We serve a good God. Well, amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Well, how many are happy to be in the house of God on a Sunday morning? God's been good to you. He's blessed us to see another week. Amen. It's so good to see you this morning. It's so good to see so many smiling faces in the house of God on a Sunday, sunny Sunday morning. How about you turn around to your neighbors and just give your neighbor a wave and welcome them to, the, to Mount Zion this morning? Well, amen, amen, amen. We're so grateful to God that you joined us this Sunday morning. We're grateful for everyone that's tuning in with us online. I just want to say to you as we get started today that you made the right decision today because you're in the house of God. You made the right decision. And if, if you want anything to go in the right direction in your life, anything you want to go in the right direction in your life, put God first. Put God first. Your week is going to go better because you put God first this week. You said that I'm going to go and I'm going to honor God on this day. I'm going to honor God to start off the week. We got to know that God is a God of growth and good. Say growth and good. You know, little is a lot when you have God in it. Little is a lot when you have God in it. You may be someone that's coming to church on a Sunday morning. You may say, well, I got a little bit of health today. Now I'm struggling a little bit. I got a little bit of money. But little is a lot when you put God in it. Because we know from the beginning that we serve a God that's a God of multiplication. And that God can take your little and he can make a lot of it. And one thing I love about God, he is a good God. Say good God. He's a good God. That means he wants the good for you. We learn from the beginning of scripture that we serve a God that's obsessed with the good. Right from the beginning, everything that he created, he looked back at it and he said what? That is good. That means God is obsessed with the good. And he's a, good, he's a God of multiplication. So wherever you're at in life, my prayer is that God is going to multiply things in your life. That God is going to multiply things this week. And you're going to see the good come out in your life because we serve a good God. I believe that God is going to do some great things for you in this service today. I believe that God has a life-changing word for you. That you may have come in here one way, but I believe you're going to leave out much better than the way you came in here. Amen? Well, amen. Let's go to God in prayer all around the, all around the sanctuary. If you could lift up your hands to the heavenlies. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just are grateful, Lord, to be in your presence on this day. We wake up this morning, we say thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. Thank you for our health and strength. Thank you that you woke us up in our right minds, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you, Lord, your presence, Lord, in your house, Lord. And we just pray, Lord, that you just come into this place, Lord, this morning. Lord, we want to feel your power, Lord. We want to feel your presence, Lord. We want a life-changing word, Lord. Send out, rain down your blessings over the faithful people of God that are here today, Lord. Bless us in an amazing way, Lord. We are in, in, we are in anticipation for the great Lord because you are a great God, Lord. Be with us in this experience. Be with the faithful people of God, Lord. Come into this place like never before, Lord. That when we leave out, Lord, we know that we experience something great because we experience you. We pray these things and we're believing, Lord, in your greatness, Lord. We pray this and we believe it in your precious name. Let every body say amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God praise all around the sanctuary as our praise team leads us.
try to make it on my, on my own, on my own, but these, these heavy burdens, these old heavy burdens, they 
that you can't live without the Lord. Oh, yes. How many have tried over and over, but you realize that you need the Lord in your life? As much as you tried, and as much as you tried to go in even other directions, it was only when you went to God where he showed you that I'm the only way. I'm the only way you can be healed. I'm the only way that you can get through what you're going to get through. I want to tell you today, we know that if it had not been for the Lord that was by our side, we don't know where we'd be even on today. Give God some praise if you believe it today. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to come to the altar right now and let's just go to God in prayer. I don't know what you may be going through, but I know what God can do in your life. God wants to hear you. God wants to answer your prayer. He wants to bless your life. He wants to do some things, but it starts with going to God in a word of prayer. We believe that when we bow our heads and humble our hearts that God is in the midst of all that we go through. Pray right now and it is for you that we are praying.
pray right now for your neighbor as we're gathered around the altar, as we're talking to God even right now. We know that God wants to heal and God wants to deliver. Today is a rough day. This week has even been a rough week. You look on the prayer list, you see people who have been going through struggles. But we know even when you go through struggles, we know that God can heal, God can help, and God can deliver. So bow your heads even right now. Even for my family, I ask for your prayers even during this time. We just found out a few days ago that my uncle passed away, my uncle Raymond Macon. So I want you to do me a favor and pray for my family even today. Thank God even for bringing him on this earth. We know he's been a great impact even to the ministry and to our family. He blessed us so many years in the parking lot. He was a servant in the army of the Lord. Come on, give God some praise. Everybody knows Brother Raymond Macon blessed us for so many years. And so we're praying over this loss. We know when we lose a loved one, that means that heaven has gained an angel. So we ask today now for your prayers even today. And pray for those on our sick and shut in list, those that are going through some challenges even today. Pray that God will bless them. Pray that God will heal. And pray that God would deliver. Talk to God right now in your own special way. Even thanking God for who he is and what he's done in your life. You wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the Lord that was by your side. You wouldn't be breathing. You wouldn't have the job that you have if it wasn't for the grace and the mercy that he put into your life, that he allowed you to have. Look back over your life and you realize that God has been good. Even through the midst of struggles, even through the midst of loss, God has still been good. Can somebody in this place still proclaim that God has been good? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you're in need of healing today, I want you to just raise your hand. Somebody in this place is in need of healing in mind, body, and soul. As hands are raised today, we raise those hands in victory, knowing and believing that God is a healer and God is a deliverer. We raise this hand saying, Lord, we love you, we know you, and we know what you can do. So even though we go through the valleys, even though we go through the storms, you are the one that brings peace in the middle of our storms and so today god we proclaim and we raise our hands asking for your peace that passes all understanding asking for your love that is bigger than any other love that we can receive asking for your grace that will look beyond our faults and supply our every needs even on today as your heads about today i'm going to ask today we have a special guest here today pastor alan alexander has come here all the way from Fort Lauderdale. Give him a great big hand clap. My good friend, my brother is here. He's worshiping with us here today. And I'm going to ask him to come and just give a few words and to lift you up in prayer today and pray for you today as he comes at this time. Hallelujah. Our God is the healer. Amen. Our God is the way maker. Amen. I'm not just speaking from a theoretical perspective. April 19th of this year, I had a massive stroke to the point that I had a stroke in my brainstem where they say it, it can destroy even my breathing, the ability for your heart to beat. The whole nine, my left side was shut down, paralyzed. But the Lord, I'm not here to tell you about something I read simply in a book. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is able. And whatever it is you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, today as we pray and believe God, I want you to believe God and know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask, think, or imagine. It's that power that works within us. Amen. So come on, let's just lift your hands where you are, if you can. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare the healing power, the blessing, the goodness of God upon your people, even right now, we declare hope, truth, faith, that God, we declare that God, your blessing that make rich and add no sorrow with it. We declare, oh God, even right now, that you are raising, delivering, and setting free, that God, your own, your people, by your hand, your powerful hand, in Jesus' mighty name. 
we declare, oh God, that we're above and not beneath, the head and not the tail, well and not sick, rich and not poor. We declare in the name of Jesus, and we stand on your word right now. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, if you receive it, give God the glory here today. Oh, come on, give God some praise today. Come on, I let go. give him some praise oh, today. Yeah. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Amen. Come on, give our music ministry a great big hand clap today for blessing us early on this Sunday morning. Good morning, Mount Zion. How's everybody doing this morning? Do I have any blessed people in the house? Just say amen. If God's been good to you, just say hallelujah. So good to have you here today on this Sunday morning. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to make sure that you're looking at your bulletin. It's going to share with you all of the great things that we're doing here at Mount Zion. We're going to watch our video announcements in a moment. And so I want you to see all of the great things that God is doing. And also prepare your minds and hearts for the giving time as we give today. Prepare your offering and your tithe even also during this moment. Let's watch our ministry announcements and see all of the great things that God is doing here at Mount Zion. Hey everyone, this fall and winter, make sure to bring your kids and youth to church. Our next generation ministry team is getting ready for our fall fest at the Dream Center. We're going to give you a fun alternative to Halloween. On Sunday, October 27th, all the kids are invited to wear their costumes and come to church. They'll get candy and Rick Smith Jr., the master entertainer who's even been on The Tonight Show, will be there live. Join us. At Mount Zion, our mission is clear to ensure that individuals are safe, saved, healthy, and most importantly, healed. We believe that healing begins with prayer and the Word of God. With a steadfast faith, we stand against the epidemic that our world faces, cancer. We are confident that God has the power to heal those battling this disease, and we aim to uplift and celebrate the courage of all survivors among us. We invite you to join us on Sunday, October 20th, for Survivor Sunday, a day dedicated to honoring and supporting those who have faced cancer. Whether you have journeyed personally through this challenge or know someone who has, let us come together to raise our voice in prayer for a cure and more importantly, for divine healing. On this special day, we will shine a spotlight on our breast cancer survivors ministry. 
Through their stories of hope and resilience, we are reminded of the strength of community and the unyielding power of faith. Come and be a part of this uplifting experience as we celebrate the triumphs and the unwavering spirits of survivors. Together, let us nurture hope and healing through our collective faith and support. We look forward to seeing you there, embracing our shared mission with love and strength. Do you know we have a ministry to the nursing homes? We are always looking for people to join this ministry and do nursing home visits. We pray, we support, we sing, and we bless. You can help today by submitting a card of encouragement. Bring in a card and write a special note and drop it off at the Connect desk. It's Pastor Larry, and I want to welcome you to year two of Mount Zion University. You know, our journey to empowerment comes with many options that I'm going to explain in just a moment. However, first of all, let me give you the secret to success at this university. Now, in order to be successful, remember this, in this course, in this study of, and journey through the Bible, there are three things I need you to do. Number one, try your best. Try your best to finish each section weekly so that you can keep a pace in your reading. Work hard to watch the video and show up if there's an in-person session that you will be attending. And after every experience, make sure that you fill out the assignments on the reading that is made available on our website, found on mountzionoakwood.org. Then just click on Mount Zion University. Number two, I want you to pray. Pray, pray, pray without ceasing. Try your best to commit each day to connecting with God. Daily prayer along with Bible reading will bless your life in ways that you can never imagine. Number three, join in on our periodic fellowship so we can discuss the journey that you're on and also receive insight into the studies. Make sure that you're there. And you know what? I'm going to throw in a number four. How about this? Prepare to celebrate. You know, when you are done, trust me, it's going to be a feeling of accomplishment that can't be beat. So make sure that you register for Mount Zion University. But here is something new, something new that I'm adding to the curriculum for this year. Now we have a total of five options. Yes, five options. With these options, you can do at-home study at four, eight, or 12-week sessions. You can also do eight video sessions, or you can attend my noon Bible study on Tuesdays at Mount Zion Oakland Village, or you can number five. Name your subject, and we'll get you the materials to study it for credit. Yes, name your subject. So I'm excited about what we're doing, and I'm excited about your future growth as you study God's Word. Things will be revealed to you, and I promise you, it will bless your life. So make sure that you're registered. And of course, if you've got any questions, feel free to call the church, and our Mount Zion University staff will assist you. But if you need to speak with me directly, feel free to call me at 440 440- 232-9588. Let's continue the journey together. Take care and God bless you. And thanks for enrolling. Happy anniversary. 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 Happy an
Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Stand on your feet. Come on, let's say happy anniversary, Pastor. Come on, let's bless God for our pastor for 44 years. Amen. Yes. Amen, amen. Bishop Mirabel, will you come here and just give a few words to our pastor today? Bishop Mirabel knows our pastor very well, and he's been such a blessing in our lives and even in Bishop's life. So Bishop's going to just come and give us a few words. Give him a great big hand clap as Bishop comes and talk a little bit about our pastor. In this world that we live, so many could rise up to be a brilliant statement, an eminent theologian, an authoritative leader, but these are men who can impress the world with their intellect and social graces. But today, I have before me a great man of God that I have met 2,000 since I left home back home. Lady Bishop, that's home with the Lord right now. Join me right now, my leader, my pastor, my friend, my archbishop. Thank you for changing my name from Gerard Merbel to Bishop Merbel. You are a wonderful man. You are like people that I see in the Bible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for Bishop Mirable for giving those words about our pastor. Amen. Amen. Stand on your feet with me today and let's prepare our minds and hearts for the giving time as we give to God today. How many know that God loves a cheerful giver? Say amen. amen. So as we give today, we don't give grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, knowing and believing that God loves a cheerful giver. As we turn our Bibles to the text in Malachi 3, 6 through 12, please note we're thankful to all of those that give in the many ways available to give, those that give through the Giblify app, those that give through Cash app, or even who give through the mail, and those who come on Sunday morning and just give to God through the tithe and offering baskets. We're thank you, thankful for you, for you who give and bless God. Let's read this text responsibly. If you would read with me Malachi 3, 6 through 12, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now and herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thankfulness, thinking unto God, thanking God for all that he's done for us. The Bible says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse, so that there will be food in my house. And prove me now in this, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessings, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Know today as we meditate on God's word, the Lord presents with us a challenge. He says, bring our tithes to the house of God and present them before him. But what follows is a challenge. He says, try me now in this. If I will not open you up the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there may, will not be room enough to receive it. You know, God is asking us to have faith in his word. He says, try me and see what I can do with your gift. It is God's desire not only to bless us, but to bless us past the point of having room enough to receive it. 
I want to say today, is there anybody in this place that would love to be blessed like that? To be have so many blessings that you can't receive it all. But the question is, how do we access the blessing that way? It is accessed by faith. Can somebody say that word? Say faith. You've got to believe that he can, that he will, and he'll do what he said he would do in his word. If we choose to obey and trust in his word, know today that he will prove himself faithful every time. I want to ask you today, is there a faithful giver in the house? Just say amen. amen. Raise that tithe and that offering in the air in victory here today. And we're going to pray this prayer of faith, Father God, today. We bring our tithe and our gift to the storehouse. We believe in your word where it says that you will open up the windows of heaven and you'll pour out a blessing. So we stand on it in faith and we act on it even on today. We love you and we bless your name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are going to bring a tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. And also those that are going to participate in communion. Get your communion at this time as you come forward. God's got a blessing with your name on it, some says. God's got a blessing with your name. Stand at the attention of God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.
Let the church say amen. Amen. Just turn to your neighbor and just give them a wave. Give them a smile. Tell them it's good to see them on this Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's house. I want you to just prepare your minds and hearts for our communion time as we partake in communion. Why don't you bow your heads in a word of meditation and a word of thanks unto God. Thanking God for yet another time. I'm going to ask our pastoral staff to come forward to the front and stand at attention as we go into our communion period. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 through 30, the Bible says, For I have received from the Lord that what also I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, the Bible says that he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said this. He said, This is my body, which is for you. He said, Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. Drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. As you bow your heads, as you're meditating on the word of God, remember, when we participate in communion, there's three things that I've always asked you to do. The Bible talks about how we should look back, how we should look ahead, and how we should look within. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, in verse 24, it says how we should look back because we participate in communion in remembrance of Christ and so we look back and what we look back toward is we look back toward the cross we remember what Christ accomplished for us and we're reminded of the love that he has for us isn't it good to know that Jesus loves you is there anybody in this place that can repeat after me say Jesus loves me Second, what we are to do is we are to look ahead. Somebody say ahead. The scripture says this. It says, until he comes, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. 26, the first time Jesus comes to the earth, he came as a suffering servant. The next time it talks about how Jesus is going to come as a conquering king. So as we commune together, it's, a, it's an observance to remind us the good news that Jesus will come again. I want to tell you today, you can meditate, you can thank God for the good news that he's coming back again. But thirdly, I want you to remember, this is a time. This is a time for us to look within. The Bible says that we should look within and ask the Holy Spirit to show us that if there's any area of our lives that might not be pleasing to God. But once we acknowledge those areas, we are to not do things over and over again we are to repent of these sins and if there's something that isn't right this is the time that we can deal with it even in this service communion it's an ideal time to make our commitment or our recommitment to Jesus Christ here is a short way to say it it's a great time every month to start over to start all over again and remember the sacrifice that was made on the cross so the Bible teaches that the bread, he took this bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is a symbolism of my body which was broken for you. And he said, do this. He said, let us eat together. So let us eat together at this moment. Then the Bible says he took the fruit of the vine and he said, this is a testament of my blood that was shed for the remission of your sins. And he said, drink ye all of it. As we have now partaken in the bread and also in the sacrificial wine, the fruit of the vine, let us bow our heads and talk to God. Heavenly Father, we lift you up and magnify you today. Thank you, God, for this special time in service, this service of communion, a time where we can look back, a time where we can look forward, 
but also a time where we can look in and we can start all over again. I pray for your people here today. Thank you, God, for this special time and this special moment. We bless your name and we thank you and we give you the honor and the praise forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for this moment. Come on, give him some praise for this moment. If you have a Bible with you, say amen. If you got a smartphone, say I got something. Second Corinthians, if you will just go to the New Testament very quickly, go to the New Testament because today is a celebration. Somebody say celebration. Amen. I want to behoove you to celebrate today in the foyer. We're just going to have some refreshments. We want you to just celebrate today and be around each other. Also, remember in your bulletin, there's an envelope. Somebody say envelope. We want you to bless the life of our pastor. We want to give him a special gift, a special financial gift. So I want everyone, everyone who will, everyone who is so willing, everyone who has been impacted, everyone here at Mount Zion to bless God and bless our pastor and put something special in that envelope to encourage him. And you can even write something special on the back of that envelope. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen and amen. Let's go to God in a word of prayer before we go into his word. Again, we're going into 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says this. He Heavenly Father, we lift you up. We thank you. We love you. We ask today as we go into your word that you will speak to our hearts, our mind, our body, and our soul. I pray today that you will just hide me behind your cross as I preach your word. Thank you, God, for yet another opportunity to hear from you. Father, you've been so good, and it's evidenced by the fact that we're all still alive and well today. Father, you've been so good, it's all in evidence because we have food on our table and clothing on our back. So that shows me that you are a good God, and for that God, you are worthy, and I want to say worthy of our praise. Thank you again for our pastor and 44 years and continuing to bless his life. Thank you for all that he's done and all that he continues to do as the shepherd over this house and we just ask today that you would be with him and touch his life and continue to bless him with health and with strength and God give him continued wisdom and discernment and knowledge thank you God for guiding his hands and guiding his feet we ask God that you would just continue to put a special blessing in his life for the sacrifice that he has made for all of these years continuing to be on the move for Christ and following your vision and following your word we love him and we thank you for him, God. And we thank you for even the people that are here today. Good people, great people. We are a church family who is on the move for Christ. We are a church family that wants to see people safe and healed and delivered. And so we ask today that you would be with us, God, as we go into your word. We love you, we magnify you, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Can the church say amen? Amen, amen. The Bible says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And I'm going to read a, the Living Bible translation. The Bible says this, and I want you to repeat after me. Say, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. The Bible says when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. The a new life has begun. Today I just want to take a quick moment to preach and teach from the subject of the design of a Christian. The design of a Christian. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, do you know your divine design? Here in the text is being explained what happens or what happened to you when you have accepted Jesus in your heart. The Bible says that you are a new creation. Now, what does that mean, a new creation? It means that you have become different than you used to be. It talks about how you react different than you used to react. It talks about how you don't have to handle things like you used to handle them. 
you have something to look forward to as a Christian. It is called eternal clarity, which means you get access to information in the future that a non-believer does not get. The Bible says that all things have passed away. Now, this is what we call the design of a Christian. And that's why you got to make sure that you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in this place that's a follower of Jesus Christ? Because you never know what life will throw at you. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you thought you were tough until you got hit in the face. You thought you were healthy until the doctor told you something different. You thought you were invincible until the crisis happened in your life. You thought you had it all together until the mental breakdown came. See, the truth of the matter is life has a way of sending you on a virtual roller coaster where you can be up today and down tomorrow. And so when I think of design, I think about my first brand new car. I will never forget my first brand new car. I was so proud to get my first brand new shiny car. I remember I was in college and I got the car that I wanted. It was a very sporty car. It was a Toyota Celica. It was silver and it had black seats and it sit really low to the ground and it was really fast. And my brother Daniel could attest to this because after I got one, he went and got the same car in the same color. And we loved our cars. And I remember I was driving on the road one day and it began to rain. And with all of the rain, the road began to get flooded. And so I was driving through all of it. And as time passed, I noticed that a portion of the car, uh, uh, excuse me, a portion of the road was flooded with about one to two feet of water. And, and some of the cars and some of the SUVs on the road, they were driving right through the flood with no problem. And as I came up on the road in my car, when it was my turn, I proceeded like everyone else to, to drive through the flood. However, a few feet in, my car stalled on me. The engine just went out and I, I couldn't move and I was trapped and I had to abandon ship, if you will, because my car was not going anywhere. And so I had to get out the car and I had to get some help. And so later after I got my car towed and I was talking to the mechanic, I, I asked the mechanic, I said, why did all the other cars make it through the flood but my car didn't? Well, the mechanic proceeded to tell me that the reason that my car did not make it through the flood was because it wasn't designed to operate in the water because of how low the car sits to the ground. See, my car was designed to be more of a sporty vehicle. It wasn't built for the terrain. And so he said, you can't drive a car like that in those conditions because your car wasn't designed for that type of weather. And so what I learned from that experience is that the transportation I was using wasn't designed for the type of place that I was operating in. And see, I don't know who's listening to me today, but I want to say to you today that maybe, just maybe, maybe you're having a struggle. Maybe a struggle is happening in your life is because you're trying to operate in areas that you weren't made to operate in. Now let me say it this way. If you want to operate in rough terrain of life, if you want to operate through the ups and the downs, you better make sure that you've got Jesus as Lord and leader over your life. Because a true relationship with the Father will change your design. Do I have any Christians here today where Jesus changed your design? See, that's why some people aren't moving forward. Because they allow what the world says. They allow the world to dictate how they operate. But I want to tell you today, if you've got Jesus in your life, you weren't designed to operate in fear. If you've got Jesus in your life, you weren't designed to operate in bitterness. If you've got Jesus in your life, you weren't designed to operate in worry. You weren't designed to operate in, 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 in hate. You weren't designed to operate in jealousy. You weren't designed to operate in doubt. Those that are in Christ, the Bible says, are a new creation. Do I have 
have any new cre creations in the house. You're designed to operate in love. You're designed to operate in faith. You're designed to operate in hope. You're designed to operate in peace. You're designed to operate in happiness because your joy didn't come from your circumstance. Your joy comes from your belief in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in this place that's got some joy in your life? Is there anybody in this place that can attest to joy in your situation? So you don't need to worry about tomorrow. You just need to thank God for today. Is there anybody in this place that can thank God for today? Because you were designed to operate in faith. Somebody say faith. When the road gets rough and things get heavy in your life, you are designed to remember that God is still in control. You're designed to remember that God still loves you. You're designed to remember that God is still for you. And even if it doesn't feel that way, my Bible says that you're designed to walk by faith and not by sight. See, those that see afflictions, the Lord will deliver them from them all. Though you walk through some dark shadows, you don't have to live in fear. God said, fear not, for I am with thee. God said, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. The Bible says, for I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. My Bible says, all things work together for good. I'm just giving you a little Bible. My Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. What shall we say to our situation? All you got to say is this. If God be for me, who can be against me? I don't know about you, but my design says that my God is faithful. Through what I go through, through the storms, how many of you just want to be in the house of God and have an experience and say that my God is faithful? My God is faithful. And see, here's what the Bible says. My Bible says he will not allow you to go through stuff not allow you to go through stuff where you won't be able to one day escape. I want to ask you, is there anybody in this place that went through some mess, but you're alive today? You went through a situation, but you're still standing. You went through it, but God gave you a way to go through it. And I want to tell you why you got through it, because he'll never put more on you than you can bear. And somebody is asking, why do I need to be reminded of this? Because the truth of the matter is too many Christians forget about their design. They forget about their divine design. Somebody needs to just stand up for issues and, and stand up to their issues and say, this thing I'm going through can't steal my joy. This situation I'm going through, I'm not going to let it stew me, stir me, and, and turn me around. Sickness, you're not going to steal my joy. Pressures on my job, you're not going to steal my joy. Death of a loved one, death of a dream, you're not going to steal my joy. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. If anybody got some fickle people in your life, you got to proclaim, I'm not going to let them steal my joy. Pain in your body, you may have woke up feeling some pain in your body. Tell that pain, you're not going to steal my joy. Political climate, you're not going to steal my joy because the joy of the Lord is my strength. See, my joy comes from knowing my God-given Jesus-following design. See, my design says this, as the Bible says, that we are a new creation. So what you did on yesterday is over. What you went through on yesterday is done. He makes all things new. And see, that's why I want to lift up my father today. Dad, I celebrate you today because that's what you've always been about. You've always been about lifting up something new. You've always been about lifting up new things. Can we give God some praise for that? New things. New things. You know, our, our world doesn't want us to hear, doesn't want to hear uh, what we are for. Hear me. The world wants you to talk about and focus on what you're against. Tell us what you don't like so we can look at you a certain type of way, so we can turn people away from you, so you can look like you're just minnow and you can look like you're out of touch. But the design of a Christian 
is to walk in wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. And so our job is not to just illuminate what we're against. Our job should be to illuminate what we're for. See, that's what our vision is here at Mount Zion. We always try to, to project what we're for. We're for saving lives. We're for making people safe. We're for making people saved. We're for making people healed. We're for helping people to get healthy. We are for helping the community. We're for the kingdom of God here on this earth. We are for forgiveness. We are for justice for the oppressed. We are for transformation. We are for preparing citizens for heaven. We are for living drama free. Because we aren't about lifting up what divides people. We're about lifting up what unifies people. Do I have any Christians in the house that can give God some praise for unification of people? So when somebody tries to suck you into their drama, don't say, I don't like that or criticize this. Just tell them, this is what I'm for. I'm for love. I'm for equality. I'm for generosity. I'm for sacrifice. I'm for empowering people. I'm for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm for the gospel of Jesus Christ that reshaped the world and reshaped history. And, and we are for letting people know that if you want to get rid of the drama in your life, if you want to get rid of the hype and the hate and the stress and the anxiety of life, if you want to change your design to make it through the floods and the storms of life, then don't put your hope in the world but put your hope in Jesus Christ is there anybody in this place that can attest to the fact that Jesus changed your design if you believe it today give God some praise in this place stand with me today your divine design bow your heads for a quick moment remember your divine design don't let your past dictate your future you're not, you're not what you were because the Bible says for those that are in Christ, you are transformed. You are a new creation and you are a new design. You have a new identity in Christ, so enter into the life that he has designed for you. I want you to remember that you are a new creation. Will you repeat after me? Say, I am a new creation. I pray today as every head is bowed in this place, if you're here today, and you need to make sure that you have a divine design. Know today that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He rose from the grave on the third day, and he wants to give you access to eternal life. Your divine design starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you want to get through the flood and through the storms of life, it starts with saying yes to the Lord, yes to his will, and yes to his way. And so I pray if you haven't accepted him into your heart, I want to say today is a good day to say yes to Jesus. I ask you the question, will you say yes to Jesus? If so, just say, I will. Those that are here today have maybe said that many times in their life. Maybe somebody said it for the first time. If this is the first time that you've said yes to Jesus, I want you to do me a quick favor. I want you to fill out the card in the pew in front of you. And I want you to let us know about it. And we want to share with you the next steps of having Jesus as Lord and leader over your life so that you can know your divine design. I pray today there's somebody here today. Maybe you've accepted Christ into your life, but you need a church home. I want to tell you today that you can have a church home here at Mount Zion. We would love to have you. I pray today if maybe if you need special prayer, I want you to fill out that card also. And we want to pray for you. There's people all around this place that have the power of prayer. And we believe that when people pray for you, God is in the midst of your prayers, of their prayers, even today. So let's bow our heads and talk to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you yes. up. We magnify your name. We thank you, God, for all of those that are here today. Thank you, God, for our divine design. We love you. We praise you. And we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and amen. As our pastor comes, he's here today. Give him a great big hand clap as he comes today. Amen. Amen. Give God another great big hand praise and give Pastor Larry a great big hand praise. 
What a pleasure it is, how great it is to hear Pastor Larry preaching, Pastor Dan preaching, hear uh, Bishop Marable and all these other great preachers that we have here in this church. And we're just grateful for the 44 years that God has given us together. And it would never have occurred had it not been for you, 44 years. And Larry, what a wonderful sermon that we are a divine design a divine design. He makes us look good. He makes us walk good. He put the cloak of his righteousness on us. And he makes us smile when we want to frown. Why, he even makes us smell good. Amen. Sniff at your neighbor right now and check it out. Amen. That's who God is. God makes us a divine design. And he designed me so that I would have a, a co-partner, a co-wife, a wife there who is just out of sight, Sister Marilyn Macon. Amen. She's beauty on the outside, beauty on the inside. She walks with beauty. She smells like beauty. That's my beautiful wife. She says, stop it right now. And my son, Daniel, we're glad to see you also. We have special guests here, and these are my friends from a long time, and that is Judge Sinnenberg, Joan Sinnenberg, and Attorney Roger Sinnenberg right there. Wave with your hand there, Judge and Attorney Sinnenberg. And most people don't know this, but I'll tell you this. We had safe surrender, fugitive safe surrender, where we had more than 8,000 people, actually, seven some, 500 over there at the other church. We have nearly 8,000 people who turned themselves in inside of this church. We had their cases adjudicated. We had all kinds of other services inside of this building. So once they had their case uh, taken care of by judges and lawyers inside the church. They could go and get jobs, get their license back, get food, get clothing, get provisions for their family before they left this site. And I shall never forget it. 8,000, nearly 8,000 over a four-day period were adjudicated in this place. Nobody uh, got hurt or harm. And, and there was only one man who tried to run. And... Uh, they, they, they looked him up. They said, listen, you are a, we know you got a murder case. And uh, whatever you do, don't run. And uh, he discovered that the judges knew exactly what they were saying and the lawyers and all of that. And he got up and run. He couldn't get out of that door. Y you know, I wish sometimes those who caught that man would catch some people trying to run out of this church on Sunday morning. Tell them you can't leave out of church. But it was because of all of the, all because of this judge who went across this city and say, you can uh, safely surrender yourself at the Mount Zion Church with Dr. Macon, Dr. Matthew, and other. And she took a risk in her career because she was out there helping out folk. Now you know that most of those folk look just like y'all or just like us. Hello, somebody. And everybody ain't trying to help us out. But Judge Sinnenberg said, I don't care. Right is right, wrong is wrong. We're going to help people out. And because of her, over 8,000 people were released on that day with their families. And there was not 8,000 people here over four days. Multiply that by four. And that's 32,000 people who came through this church and who was wrapped around the building, and folk who had license and taken away from them and had open, open uh, containers, had minor offenses, etc., brought their grandmama with them. They said, if I'm going to jail, you got to take my grandmama with me. We had some ladies here, 15 kids, She's, and little kids, they walking around there like little ducklings, and, and uh, they said, you put this mama in jail, you're going to have to put all of my little kids in jail with me. But it was all because of this lovely judge who did a wonderful thing for this county. One third of all the cases were eliminated in four days and it hasn't been done since. 
and it's been considered one of the greatest surrender programs in America. We've got congressional honors because of Judge Sinnenberg and her lovely uh, work. And I'm sure, Judge, you couldn't have done it if there wasn't a man beside you named Roger. Thank you, Roger, for being there for us as well. God bless you. We're going to leave out. I don't have very much words to say. Um, we've got a, we had a rough week. Six weeks ago, we lost Robert, my brother. And then just last week, Thursday, we lost Raymond. Raymond was a beautiful, beautiful man. He worked outside, and there was not a person who could come in this church without Raymond greeting him, and there was not a person who left out that Raymond did not greet him. All of the senior people got senior considerations. He put their cars up front and had them sitting out there waiting for them so they didn't have to walk far from the church. And he did a marvelous, marvelous ministry. And unfortunately, God called him home. I asked myself the question, why did Raymond go before me? I said, that's just like Raymond. He's just going to wait till I get there so he can escort me into heaven and take me to my mansion. Amen? I don't really, I, I don't worry about folk. I love people, but I don't worry about folk when they die because I know there's billions of galaxies in all of these universes and all of that there. I know God has a place somewhere in all of those billions of galaxies somewhere called heaven. And so I know to be absent from the body, he's present with the Lord. Guess what? He's out, he's up there escorting people in chariots. Talking about getting your chariot over here and I'll park your chariot over there. But we're going to be all right on Friday. I know you're working, many of you, but if you can come and join us uh, uh, during this very tough time on Friday at 10 o'clock, uh, we would appreciate you joining us and just showing us your love. If I didn't return your call, it's not because I would be negligent, but you had so many calls and texts, I just couldn't do it. But I want you to know I love you so very much. Would you? Would you bow your heads even today? And I think my nephew is here. Lamar, are you still in the house? Lift your hand up. Lamar, you're supposed to be sitting up here with the family. Lamar is the son of Robert, who died first six weeks ago. We're still praying for you and your family as well, Lamar. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment that you've allowed us to assemble in this place, this marvelous worship experience, this choir who have sung like heaven itself, these musicians who played like they were part of the Archangels crew, and we thank you, God, for them, the ushers and all of the staff that have been with us. We thank you, God, even for yesterday when we had our black men run. Brothers came here, gathered together, and began to understand that health is an issue in our community, and they have decided every first and third Sunday, Saturday, to run with us, 8 o'clock in the morning. We thank you for the refreshment. As we walked also, we felt like we were walking as you walked with your disciples, talking and enjoying ourselves and doing as the disciples said about Jesus, who instantly appeared. Did not our heart burn within while we spake with you and with one another? We thank you for our new black girl uh, run that's going to start on the fourth Saturday. And we pray for our ladies that they too will understand the meaning of the body. It is the temple of the Lord and must be taken care of. And we're believing now for many more years. We thank you for Marilyn, Pastor Dan, Pastor Larry and their family. And we're believing that this church is going to impact this community, this world as never before. And even in an election year, God, we're praying above all that there will be peace in the valley, that there will be prosperity in the land. That even those who are not supposed to be in prison will be released from prison. That there will be a great vision, not only for this nation, but this country, God. And we're believing that your will will be done like never before. God, all of the polarity and the division that are occurring in this nation and this world, I'm praying that the King of Kings shall show up in his marvelous way during this next election and that everybody will vote and some will say I'm going to vote early starting on Tuesdays other will say I'm going to mail my ballot in right away so we will ultimately know in advance what your will is going to be 
for this nation. Thank you for Alan, who is going to share with us this morning at 11. And we are believing mirrors are going to occur. Would you continue in prayer for me? Because I want to do something that I, uh, that I asked Alan. Anytime I have an issue or a real problem or even a health issue, you can rest assured Alan's going to get a call. Because Alan has come here at this church many years during the week. And when he's come here for revivals, he has a special gift. Say special gift. He really does have the gift of healing. Hello, somebody. Y'all looking at me like y'all crazy. I did, I, we did some healing one day on a Sunday morning. Everybody walked away from the church, called back and said, I was healed, Pastor, during that week. This man is a real, real healer. He's not no fake healer. He just told you he had a stroke. The doctor said, I don't know, and look at him. He's walking around here like he ain't never had a health issue in his life. I asked him, for those of you, is there anybody in the house have some real physical or, or spiritual or some kind of issue in your, in your life, or you're praying for somebody else? Let's say it that way. You're praying for, just wink at the neighbor next to you. You just say, are you praying for somebody else? And then wink at him. That means you're praying for you. If you want to hit, uh, stick around, he's going to be praying and anointing. I'm going to ask my musicians to hang around here a little longer. I got to give my choir a break because they got to work double time uh, at 11. But he's going to come on up here there, Alan. Alan is going to be praying. He wants to pray close to you. And I guarantee you, when this man lays his hand on you, I need a cup of deacons to be here and a special assistance to catch both because you don't know what's going to happen uh, when, when he anoints you. It happened to me as Mrs. Macon one Sunday morning. We had uh, Dr. Nimi here, and Dr. Nimi was, had the gift. He's a Catholic priest. He had the gift of healing. He had thousands and thousands of people that week in this church, and he, he was healing, and so... He came up here and he's going to heal. I, I said, I'm going to, uh, I said, you're going to pray for me. I said that, Judge and Attorney. I said, you're going to, you, let me pray for you. He, he, he said, no, you pray for me first, Pastor. And I was in this pulpit and he prayed, for, and, and I prayed for him first. And he just stood there. And then he turned around and put his hands on me and Mrs. Macon and we just fell out in the spirit of God and felt a peace that passed all understanding. People thought we were dead. And he said, oh! And boy, we were just enjoying the presence of God. And God did a healing for me. I ain't gonna tell you my business because you ain't never told me yours. But he did a healing for me that I'm still experiencing today. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you again for these years. Bless us. Thank you for all that have been said and done. Even today, I pray for uh, Pastor Allen I pray that you will anoint him, consecrate him, let him feel your presence, that others will feel the presence behind him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God's good. He's good all the time. If you want special prayer, come on down here real quick. Amen, amen. You guys going to sing?